Hi, I'm Tom, welcome to Get CTA Owned, and in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about some great software that you can use to build out your IT infrastructure. Thanks for watching. Hi there guys and girls, welcome to my second video in the Pro IT Tips, Tricks and Advice category. And I'm just gonna go over with you a handful of fantastic open source projects that um, you can use to build out IT infrastructure in the data center, in the office environment. Um, and they make for a fantastic alternative to the big names that we're used to. So um, let's jump right in. I'll give you a quick overview of each. And uh, down the line later on a bit, I'll probably focus in on each one individually and show you how I've used it maybe and uh, do something in more detail. But this is just an overview to point you in a direction of some fantastic technology and products I think you need to know about. Um, and hopefully it inspires you to um, do some research about it and maybe consider it in your next IT infrastructure project. Okay, so we're gonna go straight in with the one I've been using the most over the past uh, six, seven years, and that's PFSense. So PFSense is a uh, all-in-one network appliance, really. It, um, it's a firewall, it's a router, it's a VPN concentrator, it's a web content filter, it's a cache and proxy, um, it's a DNS server, it's a, it's a certificate authority, um, intrusion prevention, detection, um, you name it, PFSense can do it, and it can be expanded um, with third-party packages as well. Uh, it's a very, very mature product. Um, it supports high availability configurations, um, active-passive. So uh, I've got this deployed in active-passive pairs in um, a data center environment. Um, I've got it deployed um, in active passive um, in office environments and um, touch wood it's been it's been a very very solid platform and I've never really had any major issues with it um, there have been one one or two minor bugs but with the help of the PFSense community and and the information that's out there um, I was able to resolve them relatively quickly but um, like I say, we're not going to go into detail on this. I'm just giving you um, some insight into some fantastic products. So P PFSense is definitely one to look at if you're looking for um, like a, a, a something to be your network edge or form the core of your network if, if you really want. Um, PFSense is a fantastic alternative to, to something that you might use a Cisco ASA for um, or a router uh, of some other description from a major brand. Definitely check out PFSense if you're after something um, from the networking perspective. While we're on the subject of networking and PFSense, let's move over to OPN Sense or OpenSense, however you want to pronounce it. So this is a fork of PFSense, and PFSense, of course, is a fork of MonoWall, I believe. And OpenSense um, is, uh, well, it's by some of the original PFSense developers, and it offers much of the same. Um, but I'd say it's a, it's a newer a newer project, um, and it, and its focus is on trying to maintain the code quality of the core build. Um, whereas PFSense um, encourages a lot more active um, third party development and can be expanded by installing those packages. Um, OpenSense tries to wrap in all the functionality that people really wanted and had to ex had to expand PFSense with into into one core build that maintains um, code security and and maintains the quality of the build. So I've I've not been using OPN Sense for as long as PFSense, um, but I have actually replaced PFSense with it in an office environment, and uh, I have to say I like the user interface a lot, a lot more. It uh, feels more modern, it feels more intuitive, and I like how um, updates are rolled out. I like how it's designed to be one one build with everything in it, and you, you haven't got to mess around with third party packages all the time. So th this this is another fantastic networking product. Um, it's definitely worth a look. So the next thing we're going to go over to is Proxmox or Proxmox VE uh, specifically. So for those of you that are familiar with VMware, ESX, vSphere, um, or Microsoft Hyper-V or Citrix, Zen Server, Zen Desktop, 
Um, Proxmox utilizes the Linux KVM hypervisor and uh, LXC, I believe, um, to provide a fantastic fully featured virtualization environment. It supports clustering, um, it supports HA and fencing out of box with no third party devices. I know it used to rely on having hardware fencing devices such as Drax or ILOs or switchable uh, PDUs. Um, it also packages up some really fantastic um, shared storage options um, such as Ceph um, and uh, re really features a fantastic GUI as well. I mean, if you look, look in front of me here, this is obviously their website. I've got this running in several locations, but you, you can you can get some real big, large-scale virtualization platforms, clusters running using Proxmox. Very easy, very quickly. It is its own um, distribution, so you download and install it. It doesn't have to be uh, built on top of Debian or anything. You can just download the Proxmox V ISO and install it on your hardware. Um, absolutely fantastic virtualization product. Supports high availability, like I say. Um, definitely look at this. Next one we're going to go across is Zabbix. So Zabbix is a NMS or infrastructure monitoring network monitoring um, solution. Um, I was trying to find a good open source, um, reliable, relatively easy to use infrastructure monitoring solution where I currently work um, and w went through the works with Nagios and whatnot. Um, but what, what I found is Nagios at its core is free and open source. However, to to really get something out of it, you have to put a hell of a lot of work in or you have to go with some of the paid options that have expanded on its core. Um, so that's when I stumbled across Zabbix. And Zabbix provides a fantastic UI and relatively easy setup. It's got Linux agents, it's got Windows agents, it can monitor SNMP, it can do HTTP monitoring and a list of custom monitoring setups as long as you're on. So for, for those looking for a cost-effective or free and relatively simple infrastructure monitoring solution with great customized, uh, customization options and great flexibility, take a look at Zabbix. Next one most people have heard of um, is FreeNAS. Now, I've used FreeNAS uh, to present backup storage for a very, very long time. I've also used it to present iSCSI at some um, testing virtualized environments. It's it's a fantastic tool. Install it on commodity hardware, load it up with disks, and you can build some really sizable and really high performance um, network storage. Uh, so it's a great great tool to use and a great alternative to some of the um, cheaper uh, out of box branded um, network storage solutions. The last one I'm going to touch on, um, guys, and it's still on the subject of storage, is Ceph. Now. I haven't got tons of experience with Ceph, and it's worth noting at this point that my experience of Ceph um, we can thank Proxmox for, because Proxmox actually bundles Ceph, and you can run, say, for example, a 15-node, 16-node Proxmox cluster, and you can actually uh, install the um, Ceph packages on each of those nodes as well. And if they're, if they're big servers with plenty of drive bays in them or plenty of hard drives in those bays, you can run a Ceph cluster on the same nodes as your compute, the same nodes as your VMs are running on. Obviously, that's got pros and cons, but um, it makes deploying a large-scale storage solution um, to back up your virtualization platform very easy. And Ceph is a hell of a storage solution. Um, it's designed to solve hyperscale data storage problems that you can't solve effectively with a traditional SAN. Um, so it installs on um, readily available commodity hardware, so servers to you and I. Um, you just f fill them up with drives, and then every drive in, in the Ceph cluster, um, no matter whether it's just a four or five node, three node Ceph cluster, or your Ceph cluster is 100 racks, each drive in the cluster is treated as its own um, entity, its own object storage daemon OSD. Um, 
you can set your replication level two or three times. Um, you can do multiple tiers of storage. You could present it as block storage um, or use it as an object store, which it is at core. Um, definitely a piece of technology that you need to look into if you've got large scale, large scale storage requirements and a traditional SAN uh, perhaps is cost prohibitive or, um, or doesn't scale. So I hope this video's given some insights um, everyone. I, I know I said it was going to be a quick video and it is um, and I'm not going to go into details of each of these products at this point because they're big enough to warrant their own lengthy video um, which I will do and talk about my experiences with each of them and probably demo, demo them as well. But uh, what you see on front of you here is a handful of absolutely fantastic open source projects and tools um, that I feel um, any IT infrastructure guy needs to be aware of and um, and have them on the table for consideration um, on their next IT infrastructure project. So just recapping, you've got PFSense, fantastic firewall routing platform, loads of other features. OpenSense is more of the same. It's just a, a slightly different project by some of the same devs. Um, Proxmox, absolutely fantastic stand-in replacement for VMware, vSphere, um, Hyper-V, Citrix, etc. Definitely check that one out. Just get it installed on one server to start with, have a play of it, and you're going to love it. Um, Zabbix, really great, flexible, easy-to-use monitoring solution. Freenas, fantastic out-of-box options. Um, for presenting network storage in various um, various types, iSCSI, NFS, SMB, you name it. And Ceph, um, probably the um, world-leading um, petabyte, exabyte scale storage solution um, at the moment to, to solve problems that you can't with traditional SANS. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, please stay tuned. I'm going to have lots more pro IT stuff on this channel as well as my non-pro stuff like reviews and music and stuff like that. And uh, rock and roll. I'll, uh, I'll see you on the next one.